Good morning everyone. I would just like to upload a, a brief video today on Zoltan Fabri's 1976 feature film, The Fifth Seal. A absolutely extraordinary piece of film direction. Some of the finest, most impressive interior lighting up to that point in history. And then the dialogue in this film is so dense. This is one of these very thick philosophical texts. It's based off of a novel. Um, just double check. Yes, it's um, of the same name, published in 1963, author Ferenc Santa, Hungarian author. I'm going to read out the plot synopsis on Wikipedia because it's going to do a better job than I inevitably will of summarizing the film, I feel. During the reign of the Arrow Cross Party in World War II, four friends are chatting around the table of a bar owned by Bela Ferenc Bengtse when a wounded photographer, Istvan Degi, who has just come back from the battlefront, joins them. During their gathering, two Arrow Cross officers come in for a drink. After leaving, the group bitterly refers to them as murderers. One of the friends, a watchmaker named Miklos Gairixa, Lajos Oz, poses a moral question to Janos, Sandor Horvath, about two hypothetical characters, Katatiki and Jaigaya. Katatiki was the leader of an imaginary island, and Jaigaya was his slave. The powerful and careless Katatiki treated the poor Jaigaya with extreme brutality, but never felt any remorse as he lived by the barbarian morality of his age. Jaigaya lived in misery and suffering, but found comfort in the fact that whatever cruelty happens to him, it is never caused by him, and he is still a guiltless person with a clean conscience. What would he choose if he had to die and reincarnate as one of them? The photographer says he would choose Jiagiyu, but the others don't believe him. As they go home, we get to know some of the deeper secrets of their lives. It turns out that Jairixa is hiding Jewish children at his flat. Meanwhile, Laszlo, Laszlo Marcus, drinks excessively, plagued with the question posed, and experiences hallucinations in his drunken stupor. Upset that the four bar attendees didn't believe him about Jiagiyu, the photographer reports the four of them to the Arrow Cross party for calling the Arrow Cross officers murderers. And the next evening, the four friends are at the bar again when Arrow Cross officers arrest them. They are taken to an office of the party when an Arrow, where an Arrow Cross official, Sultan Latinovitz, forces them to slap a dying partisan in the face in order to be freed. Gurixa is the only one that complies. Gurixa exits the building, severely disturbed by what transpired. As he walks through the city, Buildings explode and crumble. Heavy, huh? Now I thought it might be interesting to read out some of the IMDB user reviews, particularly as some of them are from Hungary, and they can inform us, they can they can give us more insight about this film's cultural context than I certainly can. Anyway, this first one is from 2003 by one excuse me, by one Pudli. Great dialogues, great scenes, and all about you. One of the greatest New Age Hungarian writer, Santa Ferenc's book is digging very, very deep into the human being and the human nature. Fabri, the director, chose the best actors and made one on one of the best Hungarian movie. You have to see it more than a few times to pick up everything. It's all about life, about war, with amazing questions you can't even answer. You must read the book. He gave it 10 out of 10. Another 10 out of 10 is from... Immortin, excellent painting about the dictatorship's workout. In 1944, during World War II, a fascism regime has come into power in Budapest. Where the hard circumstances, a few men come to drink and spend every evenings in a boozer together to speak out their common acquaintances in the proper and finest making of the fresh calf's meat. This is an odd Google Translate, I believe, but this, this is fun. There are Mr. Gierikska, the watchmaker, Mr. Kerali, the book agent, Mr. Kovacs, the carpenter, and Bela colleague, the innkeeper. One day, an unknown photographer come to join them exactly when Gurixa put a question in his usual satirical method to the company. What if they could rebirth and choose between the roles of the rich tyrant and the tortured slave who's still honourable? What would be? By the time they don't know yet that this theoretic question must be answered very soon in a real torture room. This movie paints excellent picture how the dictatorship has worked indeed and how the regime has caught and changed the common people into something they would never become. It's not a 1984 like we've seen that in Orwell's powerful but mostly utopian vision, and either it's not really a Viva Vendetta, which is Hollywood's romantic Zorro-like dream about a totalitarian society. It's the story of the nameless people, the nobody who has the power at will, but no will to use their power. The director, Zoltan Fabri, handles the characters properly. 
The dialogues are great and the filming is amazing. Some people may say it's dark, but I think it has more than bright light to show how the regime has manipulated the common people who lived in the country. They didn't print any handout against the regime. They wouldn't explode anything. They just would live in the country, still. They were hazardous for the regime. Once they got their accordance and reason, they got the power and could not be stopped anymore. Or almost not. This is what the regime never let to happen. I think of the main oppressor character. This is a very peculiar translation, but do bear with us. This is actually quite a good piece overall. I think of the main oppressor character, formed by Zoltan Latinovix, in my opinion he was one of the greatest actors who has ever lived, has right. It's a tiny issue when somebody drop a bomb to a party house. Some paint sphinx to the walls. It's also a tiny issue. Some shoot few friend of ours, that's also a tiny issue. Why? Because we're going to catch them and hang up or shoot them. Before or after, but finally they were all dead for sure. So they are all tiny issues. The remaining ones matter. Whose don't explode bomb, don't paint or anything. They live among us. They are the mass. We may have some real problem with them. Fascism or communism, doesn't matter. Both has followed the same overwhelming cliché what Ferenc Santa, the writer, put so effectively into his character's mouth. These four men have to learn that you really have the right to tell them that their wife is a whore or beat them as you wish. They must memorize that they can do nothing but you can do anything. Keep them in doubt. Let them fear, including the innocents and criminals, so you will beat them on a pedagogic basis. I'm wondering that this movie could be created during the 70s of Hungary. For the readers on, are not native Hungarians, we have a communist regime until 1989, but I'm quite sure that the oppressors of that time didn't recognize themselves in this mirror as they acted right after 1956 in the darkest years of the communism. Maybe Mr. Giriska, the watchmaker, said properly, the tyrant was sure that he is the best ruler in the world because he acts accordingly to the morality of the age and he has right reason. One more thing. In my opinion, the Miss movie precisely opened up the sad fact that almost all dictatorships have left shame in the nameless survivor's soul for something to hardly let them speak and trust again to each other. It's one of the oppressor's well-crafted advantage. In total, excellent movie. Deep and touching. Good acting. Honourable question. What is your choice would be? I can recommend this anyone who wished to know more about the psychology of the theme. Unfortunately, the DVD release I got has got only Hungarian language. I hope that some dubs or subtitles are available somewhere for other languages to show this great movie for a greater audience. Okay. Now, a big question about morality. This is next to you from one S-Z-E-L-C-S-I-L-L-I-G. I -L -L -I also couldn't try and pronounce that. Who would you like to be? Katatiki, slaveholder, or Gaiji? Slave. This question pops up at a casual meeting between regulars in a bar. Everybody tries to figure out his own answer. Meanwhile, the historical events unfold and the characters has to make the real choice in real life. A slow-paced, dialogue-driven movie based on a book, characters played by top actors under good director. Oz Lajos, playing one of the main characters, has a really memorable acting here. Music also matches the mood, a little bit grotesque made by a mechanical device which we can observe at the beginning of the movie. The visuals are usually dark, there are some references and symbols. One of the most noteworthy visual references when a Bronimus Bosch painting, The Garden of Earthly Delights, comes to life. It's a musty movie from Hungary. Then Schleicher Flip, Philip says, Amazing. Would you rather be a tyrant or his victim? Accidentally, characters start this conversation. Soon they will have to choose their roles for real. Seemingly boring, typical evening in a bar turns wrong with the sudden arrival of the Harrow Cross. The Arrow Cross, Hungarian Gestapo. Our hero heroes are a typical mix of ordinary people with no interest in big war events. But someone's overheard their apparent antipathy for the regime, and now they will have to prove on which side they are. Perfect play, almost a piece de theatre. Forces you to think from the first time the difficult question is asked. Then, scene by scene, gets better and better until the end. Stays in your head for long. Could be easily interpreted as a hidden criticism of the communist regime back in the 70s. Absolutely timeless and always actual. A masterpiece. Then this is claim here. Best Hungarian movie of the 20th century. When I first watched this movie, I was 16 and I was very impressed. In my opinion, this movie is the best Hungarian movie which is made in the 20th century. I saw this movie a couple of times and I read the book as well. It is strange, I enjoyed the book as well, but I enjoyed the movie a bit more. If you didn't saw the Miss movie yet and you like slower philosophical movies, go and watch it, you won't regret. I think I like this movie the most because I think the same way as the author of the book did. In my opinion, if you would be able to choose between a life of an emperor and a slave, no one would choose the slave. 
no matter how hard his slash her life was before. And as Gay Rixka said in the movie, if you tell that you would choose the slave, you are a liar. I might read another one here. An intriguing and universal film, Pocket G99. <clears throat> Excuse me. What hypothetical question could be compelling enough to spawn an entire film? I watched this entire movie because I wanted to know. The good. The hypothetical is really re very compelling. Furthermore, it is discussed in a way that reveals its subtlety rather than coming back to the same sticking point over and over. The characters in this film are vivid and well portrayed. The setting is also surprisingly rich. This is important because a lot of this movie takes place in the same place. I was somewhat worried about this movie would just be people sitting around a table talking. That is more or less the case, but it works out nicely. The proceedings are intellectually and spatially dynamic. I was also a bit worried that I wouldn't be able to really understand the film without having the proper cultural context. This turned out to not be much of an issue. I may have missed some things, but you can enjoy this film knowing only that it's set in some country that is at war. The bad large part of this movie is people sitting around the table talking. Like I said, I found this to be interesting, but isn't particularly exciting. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he gave it 9 out of 10. That's good enough. The Fifth Seal, Uriah 43. Uh, he gives it 7 out of 10. Um, yeah, that's not much interesting review. The next two are pretty basic. 10 out of 10 reviews. They're not that interesting. They're very short. So is this one. So there, yeah, Tommy Master from November last year. There is no question the best Hungarian movie of all time. Definitely The Fifth Seal, the very best Hungarian movie ever made. The director, Fabri Zoltan, did an excellent job in this movie. It's interesting, these, they're, they're listing these Hungarian names. This is where the, what I know as the surname um, at the start here. I, I, is, there, is there a custom I'm not aware of? I know that's the case sometimes with um, Chinese and Korean names. It's fascinating, okay. The director of Fabri Zoltan did an excellent job in this movie, and the cast, oh boy, unbeatable. The narrative and the message is timeless, and that's why I call this movie a masterpiece. It's a liked film. You know, this is actually the, um, it was selected as the Hungarian entry for the best foreign language film at the 49th Academy Awards, which is interesting, considering the totalitarian regime at that time. But it wasn't accepted as the nominee. Anyway, I've waffled on for long enough about other people's words on The Fifth Seal. I do think it's quite a brilliant work. Do check it out.